You know, it's been a long time, a long, long time since you've really felt passion. Uh, you've gotten through your days. You've done you know, what's been necessary to survive. You've really been doing a tremendous amount, allowing, allowing uh, a lot of it. And it's all been without that real passion. That's one of the first things you lose after you come out of awakening and you then make that choice to go into mastery. The passion just goes away, and you try to rekindle it, and it doesn't work. And you try to rekindle it even more, and you try to make up some new passions, and you get passionate about making up new passions, but even that goes away, and suddenly there's nothing. It's emptiness. And yeah, that's the worst time. As you all have experienced, it's the very worst time when you just feel you're in that void. And that's where that, that time in the void is so, is where it's so important to do the allowing, to make the real transformation. You're in the cocoon, you've gone from being the caterpillar and you're on your way to the butterfly. In that cocoon, the allowing, because there's nothing else you can do. You can't fight anymore within yourself. You can't figure it out anymore. Uh, the human couldn't construct it if it tried, and it shouldn't be trying. And you're just laying there in that void of the cocoon, and what can you do but allow? Just allow. And that's what you've done. And that's why we're here. And that's why we can proclaim that this next series is Passion 2020. It's interesting that it lands in the year of 2020. It's, uh, I guess, partly coincidental, partly not, but it's the emergence of the passion. The passion is personal to each and every one of you, but it won't be anything like your old passions. It won't be a hobby. It won't be trying to take on uh, uh, politics or the environment or anything like that. Those things are going to seem like tedious jokes to you going forward. Humans, uh, sometimes they get all in a scurry about things. Uh, they get all wrapped up in it and not really looking at the overview of things. As we go into our passion, your passion, the passion was to be here on the planet. Feel back for a moment when you could have had your enlightenment last lifetime, maybe even earlier this lifetime, last lifetime, maybe the, even the lifetime before, and you said, I'm going to wait because you knew that something was coming up. I'm going to wait. A and you did, and now here we are. You could have had your realization in the mid-1800s, when I would say historically not a lot going on on the planet, no great big changes, but you said, I'm going to wait till about 2020. It's the time of machines that I talk about so, so much, meaning technology, computerization. It's the time when there's so much changing on the planet. It is phenomenal. A new human species is about to be birthed, uh, and it won't be a typical biological species. It's a time when there is going to be a tremendous amount of Oh, uh, control may be not the right word, but regulation with the with, uh, technology. Uh, as I talk about in Pronost 2019 update that we did recently, magic is going to be outlawed. Not necessarily on the books as such written magic is uh, no longer um, legal, but it's going to be outlawed in terms of anybody who's not in conformity, who's not thinking and act. Every, everything all of you do, all humans do, is going to be monitored. And you could say, well, no, it's never really going to happen to me, or that's sometime long in the future. No, it's what they call the Internet of Things. It means the big brother, the eyeball, everywhere you go. And there's some great advantages to it, some wonderful advantages, finding lost children, uh, finding who committed the crime by viewing some surveillance tapes on a store camera, or things like that. Great advantages in all this. I'm not saying it's bad. However, once somebody steps out of line psychologically, and that's – I didn't even talk about this in, in the Pronost update, but there's such concern these days about doing psychological profiling, you know, who's going to be the next uh, mass shooter on the planet, uh, who's going to 
do heinous things to others. So profiling will become very acceptable. They'll never call it that, but it's monitoring. Anybody who goes out of conformity, who smiles too often uh, – no, I'm serious. No, there's, there's going to be an algorithm for smiling, you know, because it's going to be consi- – the computer – artificial intelligence is going to figure out, here are the dynamics that occur when somebody's on their way to crazy. And things like they blink too much, or they smile too much, or they um, have certain antisocial behaviors. It's all going to be monitored, and then that person is going to be brought back into conformity. Oh, no, not not by beating them to death. No, by giving them cake (laughs) and some funny little pills. Yeah, it's that's where society is going to. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's an experience of society. But you have it so well remembered within you, the whole Atlantean thing. What happened there? Uh, what was meant to be a, a, a good thing and really got humans trapped in their mind. And you made a commitment, your passion. I'm going to come back at this time, and I am going to be the magic. I am the magic. And. I'll tell you right now, there's no need for you to worry about all the computer, computer algorithms figuring you out as the crazy one, because you're going to have such a command of energy, uh, non-intrusive, um, uh, non-manipulative command of energy, they're just not going to see you. All the rest of uh, magic will be outlawed, so to speak. They're not going to see you. And you're going to truly be the standards for this planet. It is a huge responsibility, but it is also your passion. It's why you came back. It's why you've endured everything you've endured up to now. It's why, um, well, you could say there wasn't instant realization. It's why there's been times you felt so damn lonely and so ineffective because it was just waiting until now. We've come through the Emergence series, and you have emerged. You have. We're we're not going to be emerging. You have emerged. Now it's that thing when, when the butterfly first spreads its wings, it feels a little awkward. And it's trying to fly, but it still remembers what it was like to be green with 18 legs. And there's a little bit of awkwardness. And really that's what we're going to be doing in this series is is going through that awkwardness. But I have to remind you, you, you are realized. Now you just need to realize it. <laughs> so let's take a deep breath with that. Passion 2020. The passion is to be here, to be the magic on the planet. How do you define magic? Uh, it's a variety of different ways, but it's when you let energy serve you. And it's really not magical, it's natural. But for most of humanity, It's going to seem like magic. Magic is those things that cannot be defined by science or computers or regular human logic. What we're going to be doing, it's not in the science books. They can cut your brain apart and try to figure out how you're doing all this, and they still won't find it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, you did that in Atlantis. Uh, No, they're not going to do it now. They're not going to do it now. It's what can't be defined. It, it, it's not uh, in accordance with current physics. But that's okay, too, because current physics are going to be changing very fast. And again, uh, none of this is far off future. None of this is just projection on my part. Along with those who I work with at the Crimson Council, we look at what is happening. A lot of the technology stuff doesn't make its way to the first or second pages of the, your newspapers. Oh, there aren't newspapers anymore. Uh, Of your internet feeds, I have to get used to that one, Uh, because it's not really exciting. I mean, who wants to read about technology? I know some engineers here do, but uh, it's not exciting to most people. They want to read about uh, the latest uh, mass murder. They want to read about the latest weather catastrophe. You know, the the drama scenarios, Uh, politics, of course. So it's not making the front page news, but it's a creeping syndrome. 
and it's creepy too, but it's a creeping syndrome. It is creeping into everybody's lives. Nobody stopping and saying, hang on a second, everybody. What's, what's it going to be like in five years or ten years? And even when they do, it's like, well, look all the benefits of uh, a brain implant, a chip implant. You know, the, oh, don't get me going because we just did Pronost and I don't want to do Pronost part two here, but. <laughs> And I'm sorry if I'm going to offend. No, I'm never sorry when I offend anybody. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, there are certain governments uh, in, on the planet, not to mention any. Well, we're not going to go there. So, <laughs> yeah, nor would we dare. That have a very um, large uh, movement, both technology, financially, and everything else, to do mass chip implants on every planet. It will be the law. You must have one. And I'm not going to get a, given any names here, but Dragon, it, there it's, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to be part of the social reform. It's not in Europe and it's not in the United States, so don't worry too much about that. But it will be required. And I'm going to say, feeling into it and having traveled there already, uh, in about seven years. Not so very far away. Well, you're already doing it kind of to dogs, but it doesn't affect the brain. But no, the implants are going to be a, the new thing. But I digress because I want to talk about the reason you're here on the planet right now. In a way, you've chosen a really shitty time. <laughs> well, no, I, I was channeling Sartre. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, o the, only, the only toilet bowl uh, headband from Atlantis. The passion is to be here to be the standard, to be in perfect, harmonious command with your energy. That's it. You're not going to be standing on street corners uh, uh, evangelizing. Uh, a lot of you aren't going to be doing any large group teaching or anything like that. Uh, you're not going to be uh, you're not going to be trying to proactively going out and change e everything. Uh, it's just not going to happen. You're going to be doing it very quietly, but that is the loudest way of doing it. That is the most effective, and that is the most uh, really uh, notable way of doing it quietly in your own life. In your own life. So we come to this time of Passion 2020. I've been waiting for it for a long time. And that's what we're here for now, Passion. You'll have a rekindling of Passion within you. This is what I'm here for. I get it. And remember, it's not a cause. I came here to be all that I am, to be the Merlin, to bring the magic back to the planet, period. That's it. And that, that is such a passion, a real reason for being here, a real reason for letting your light shine. In this year, for so many of you, uh, all the confusion uh, about uh, that goes around in your mind, what am I supposed to be doing? Why am I here? It's a pretty big one that you have. That, that dissolves away. You're going to know so clearly, 2020 clear, why you're here. And the fact is, is that you know, you don't, it's not a big mission. It's not about going out there and trying to convert the natives or the muggles. It's about just being. You're going to find it delightful. And Calder doesn't believe it, but just to go somewhere to be at an airport or a store and just to stand there uh, and just to be in your self in your energy and watch how funny little things happen all around you uh, and you know some would be amazing suddenly somebody is just in your presence and they start to cry uh, be because being in your light gives them such hope and they they can't figure it out in their head they don't know that it was you Joanne that did it to them but they're just crying sorry they're going to always cry but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Be because he brings <laughs> such joy. No, you're going you're gonna, to uh, actually enjoy – Calder really doesn't believe this – but you're going to enjoy getting back out there. 
being amongst others, and then for brief periods of time, because you're going to see the direct effect it has, and you're not going to you're not going to be trying to inflict anything on anybody. You're not going to be trying to change their life. But can you just imagine you're out, um, let's say at a, at a, what do you call them, department store. You're at a store, it's busy, the clerks are cranky, the customers are pushy and obnoxious. Uh, it, it's, uh, you can feel all the energies, the energies that used to make you feel nauseous and, and weak. And suddenly you're there, you're just standing there. You're not, you're not buying anything. You don't need to buy anything. You're just standing there, and you're watching almost a uh, the the chaos start to reorganize itself, and not because you're making it, just because you're there. You, you, these are real examples of what's going to happen. Suddenly, in what is chaos and doldrum, boredom all around you, grayness. Suddenly, all the energy starts twirling and swirling. The lights go out. Things start falling and breaking. People are bumping into each other. And you stand there with a big old smile on your face, knowing that things are swirling back into harmony just because you're there. The energies that you bring in are so pure and clear that it causes all the stuck energies to break out of being stuck and to come back to their natural way of being. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in everything in your life. Your home, out with people, your automobile, your computers, everything else. And it might break before it gets fixed and, and, and comes into a whole new level. And that's OK. You will be OK with it, because you realize that, first of all, you. You're gonna you're gonna remember some of you being a witch way back when, another lifetime, and some of the dastardly deeds you did, and some of the energy confusion that that came out. You're gonna think for a moment, oh no, here we go, witch time again, and then you realize, no, this time, because you're doing it without agenda, you're just being. You watched how the energies maybe cause some chaos and commotion, but then there's a harmonization that occurs just because you're there. And you're going to have a big smile. And you're going to feel that passion. And you're going to say to yourself, ah, what I went through to get here was nothing. That was easy. <laughs> but I've got you all on some sort of videotape. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to show you those tapes of with your crying and your complaining and everything else. You look like that group in the shot at the end of the video. <laughs> It wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs>